Sutra. The Buddha said, if a person who is aware points out the way to the person who is in the midst of confusion and makes him aware, then do you suppose, Purna, that once the person is over his confusion, he could lose his sense of direction again in that village? No, won't honored one. Commentary. The village in this analogy represents the nature of the treasury of the first come one. The confused person represents living beings who have given rise to mistaken perception to false thinking. South and North represent the false and the true confusion and enlightenment. The confusion of the person in the village represents the arisal of ignorance on the part of living beings. Now the Buddha says to Purna, if a person who is aware points out the way to the person who is in the midst of confusion and makes him aware, the confused person can tell south from north. He thinks confusion is enlightenment. It's just like people who always think they are right. They see someone and decide he's against them, so they get angry at him. If they think someone else is good to them, they welcome him with open arms, and they think they are right in their opinions. Actually, they are upside down, but they don't know that they are upside down. They don't know that they have mistaken south for north. In that state of confusion, suppose they encounter someone who makes them aware. The person who is aware represents the Buddha, or a good and wise advisor, who says to him, you are confused and should turn from confusion and return to enlightenment. You think that way is south, but you are mistaken. Mistaken, it is north. He strengthens him out about confusion and enlightenment. He straightens him out about confusion and enlightenment. Then, do you suppose, Purna, that once the person is over his confusion, he could lose his sense of direction again in that village? After someone has told him the right directions, would he get even more confused? No one on one that is not possible, Purna says. Once he has been clearly told, he wouldn't get confused again. When we are confused, we are just dreaming, but we won't admit we are dreaming. I tell you that you are dreaming right now, but you say, I'm not asleep and I'm not dreaming. Why do I say, why do you say I am? Suppose a person is having a dream that he is an emperor or president or that he is as wealthy as a Rockefeller or a Kennedy. And there he is in a dream with everything he ever wanted, wealth, riches, status, pleasures, luxuries. He's rich and he's a high official as well. And all his relatives are either PhDs or full professors or members of the upper class. Then someone comes along and says, you're dreaming. Do you think he believe that? Will he admit he's dreaming? No. The person who is dreaming such wealth and status won't believe he's dreaming. When he wakes up from the dream, though, then he'd know he was just having a good dream and will regret having awakened so soon. He longed for the dream to continue. This is just like people in the world who are busy all day long, running here today and there tomorrow, wondering what the future holds in store for them. What you haven't got yet, you want to get. What you've already got, you are afraid of losing. So you get all attached and bound up. When you get enlightened, you wonder how you could have ever been so upside down. However, a person who has become enlightened for won't long for his former state of being. That's the difference. Sutra, Purna, the first come ones of the ten directions are the same way. Confusion is groundless and ultimately empty in nature. There had basically been no confusion. It merely seemed as if there were confusion and enlightenment. When the delusion about confusion and enlightenment is ended, enlightenment does not give rise to confusion. Commentary The Buddha now says, 
put uh, the first commands of the ten directions uh, the same way. They are like the man in the village who, in the Buddha's analogy, will not become confused again once he is made aware of the right road. Confusion is groundless and ultimately empty in nature. He won't get confused again because the confu confusion has no root, so it can't produce new confusion. Basically, there is no confusion, so it doesn't have a nature, and without nature, it is ultimately empty. There had basically been no confusion. It merely seemed as if there were confusion and enlightenment. To seem to be is to not really exist. It is to be empty and false, just as in the case of the person who gets confused about directions. The directions themselves aren't lost. It's just that he doesn't recognize them. When the delusion about confusion and enlightenment is ended, enlightenment does not give rise to confusion. You had a mistaken impression, but once you awaken and recognize the confusion, it ceases to be. As I often say to you, don't fear the arisal of your thoughts. Just fear your enlightenment will be slow in coming. Everyone has false thoughts, a profusion of them. When this one goes, that one comes. But don't be scared of the arisal of these false thoughts. Just fear that you will be slow in becoming enlightened. Get enlightened quickly. Don't be slow about it. When a false thought comes up, you want to pursue it to its origin. Ask who the mother of that false thought is. Where did this false thought arise from? If you find the mother of that false thought, you can tell her to look after her child. Actually, though, that false thought doesn't have a mother, and so there's no one looking after it. When you find out it doesn't have a mother, it won't be naughty anymore, because it won't even exist. Without a mother, how could it be? When the confusion about enlightenment and confusion is ended, there will be no more confusion. After you become enlightened, you won't be able to get confused again. Once you are enlightened, the confusion disappears, and so there can't be any more confusion to arise. Therefore, the Buddha having already accomplished Buddhahood and cut off ignorance won't give rise to confusion again. Sutra is also like a person with an eye ailment who sees flowers in space. If he gets rid of his eye ailment, the flowers in space will disappear. If he was so stupid as to quickly return to the spot where the flowers disappeared and wait for them to reappear, would you consider that person to be stupid or smart? Commentary The confused person is also like a person with an eye ailment who sees flowers in space. The flowers were beautiful, but they were only there because of the eye ailment. If he gets rid of his eye ailment, the flowers in space will disappear. Let me ask you now, do you think there were any flowers in space after all? If you say there weren't any, why did he see, why did he see flowers? Oh, it was because he had an eye ailment. When his eyes got better, the flowers disappeared. But they, but did they really disappear? If he was so stupid as to quickly return to the spot where the flowers disappeared and wait for them to reappear, would you consider that person to be stupid or smart? If that confused person were to find a place in space where the flowers were last seen and wait there, for them to reappear, would you call him stupid or smart, Pona? Sutra, Pona said, originally there weren't any flowers in space. It was through a false nest in the sea that they were produced and extinguished. To see the disappearance of the flowers in space is already upside down. To wait for them to reappear is sheer madness. Why bother to determine further if such a person is stupid or smart? Commentary, the Buddha said, you are like the person waiting for the flowers to reappear in space. Would you consider that person to be stupid or smart? Puna said, originally there weren't any flowers in space. 
it was through a false niece in the scene that they were produced and extinguished since no flowers arose there were no flowers extinguished for him to wait for the flowers to arise again is a mistake they were only there in the first place because the eyes were sick to see the the disappearance of the flowers in space is already upside down to wait for them to reappear is sheer madness why bother to determine further if such a person is stupid or smart you say he waits for them to come out again that is just as if i were to plant a flower and then wait for you to come up just wait there without sleeping or eating if we were as sincere in our study of the buddha drama as he was about waiting for those flowers we'd probably be successful but the person waiting for the flowers was sincere because about the wrong thing he was in fact incomparably stupid so Pena says the man is totally insane he's out of his mind that person isn't even up to being called stupid Sutra, the Buddha said, since you explain it that way, why do you ask if the wonderful, enlightened, bright emptiness can once again give rise to the mountains, the rivers, and the great earth? Commentary, so Pana data means that the person waiting for the flowers is insane. The word Kwang, insanity, is composed of two characters in Chinese, Kwang and Dian. Huang results from excessive yang and tian from excessive yin. These are the definitions assigned in Chinese medicine. Yang, the fire or temper of a person, results in madness when extreme. Yin, the lack of fire, results in another kind of insanity when extreme. To be obsessed with fame is a case of excessive yang, and to be obsessed with profit is a case of excessive yin. In the whole world, there are only two people, one intent upon fame and one intent upon profit. If someone praises the first person and says something like, You're so good, intelligent and wise, everything about you is wonderful. To him, those words of praise are as sweet as candy. The other one, the one seeking profit, thinks of ways to cheat people out of their money. He thinks of every way possible. He's totally dishonest. For instance, when he sells rice, he adds a little water to it to make it heavier. And if he adds a little water to the beans, they swell, and he has to put fuel to the in the bag to fill it. So in China, there was a rice seller who was struck down by lightning, and on his back, they found four characters which no one could decipher until someone added one long stroke down the middle completing the four characters which read he added water to the rice when the world gets filled with too many evil people one gets struck down by lightning to serve as an example for the others the buddha said since you explain it that way, why do you ask the, if the wonderful, enlightened, bright emptiness can once again give rise to the mountains, the rivers, and the great earth? Once the thirst common has obtained the fruition of the wonderful, enlightened, bright emptiness, can he again have the mountains, the rivers, and the great earth arise? Why would you ask that? The Buddhas, the thirst common, are like, the confused person whom someone has set straight so that he is no longer confused. So to wonder whether one can again become ignorant once one has been certified as having attained the fruition of Buddhahood is to be like the person who stands waiting for the flowers to reappear in space. Once one has reached the fruition of Buddhahood, one could not turn around in the treasury of the first come one. One could not turn around and give rise to ignorance again. Sutra, it is like a piece of ore containing gold and a mixture of other metals. 
once the pure gold is extracted it will not become an ore again it is like wood that has been burnt to ashes it will not become wood again commentary another analogy is given to show that after one becomes a buddha one does not turn into an ordinary living being again it is like a piece of ore containing gold and a mixture of other metals the shreds of pure gold are mixed with other substances with some amounts of labor you can extricate the gold from the ore once the pure gold is extracted it will not become an ore again the pure gold won't become mixed with sand silt or earth again also, it is like wood that has been burned to ashes. It will not become wood again. Once the wood is burned, it can't turn back into wood again. The wood can become ashes, but the ashes can't turn directly back into wood. Sutra, the Bodhi, and Nirvana of all Buddhas, the first come ones, are the same way. Commentary, all Buddhas, the first come ones of the ten directions. Here, two titles of the Buddha have been used together for the sake of literary style. The Bodhi and Nirvana are the same way. Bodhi is the fruition of enlightenment, and Nirvana is for wonderful virtues. They are just like the pure gold in the mind. When one is still a living being, one is like the unrefined gold in the mind. When one has already become a Buddha, one has turned into pure gold, and pure gold won't get mixed with impurities and more. One who has become a Buddha is also like the ashes, while living beings are like the, the wood. Wood can turn into ashes, but ashes can't turn back into wood. The body and nirvana of the Buddhas of the ten directions, the fusion of Buddhahood is like these examples. It cannot change back to what it was before.